The second patch for Kerbal Space Program 2 now has a release date. It's the 12th of April, so not far away, the middle of next week actually. And as with the first patch, this should be a pretty extensive and, well, fundamentally uh, fix many things that really do need addressing. Now there is a forum post, it doesn't go into too much detail, but we'll take a look at that right now. So like I say, the details are fairly light here, but what we've got is the date itself, Wednesday, uh, the 12th of April. That's very close at this point, glad to see that. Uh, this post, by the way, is by Nate Simpson, who is the creative director of KSP2. He said that the update is going to include a blend of performance, stability, UI and visual improvements. And this is really good, it's largely what I'd expect to see, and in many ways is quite similar to what we got with the first patch, although um, I'm not sure how many visual improvements come with the first patch, I don't think there was any, was there? Performance improvements are still definitely needed, the first patch did bring some, but I'd like to see more improvements made to the VAB, the launch pad, and when staging. There's also still some performance issues when in orbit around some of the planets, so you can get some uh, significant frame rate drops there. And, you know, we all know that uh, this really needs to be improved on lower spec machines. Let's see what else we've got there. Uh, one unheralded improvement, they say, in addition to the already announced fixes, which we'll have a look in just a moment, is nighttime lighting at the Kerbal Space Center. That's taken a big step forward, and we've got a really nice looking image here. Uh, this is done at night time, so yeah, we can see there is some um, dramatically improved light in there. In fact, this looks uh, quite a bit better. It's going to be interesting to see how that lighting improvement affects the other areas of the Kerbal Space Center. Further down, we, it says, uh, meanwhile, we continuing to work on upcoming science mode feature. Of course, that is a really big deal for anyone who wants to have more than just a sandbox element to the game. The science feature will be about uh, well gathering science as a form of currency to unlock features within the game. This will enable you to build ever more powerful ships, so kind of like a mini campaign mode in well in, in a way without the uh, story behind it. So that's something I really did like in the KSP1. It's going to be good to see that come in in KSP2. So that's not a part of patch two, just for clarity, but it is something that they're saying that they are working on. They've continued to make progress on that, as they have with re-entry and thermal systems. Again, that's not coming with um, patch two, but it is something which hopefully should now be a matter of weeks away. In fact, I think I remember uh, Nate Simpson saying that previously, that we should expect to see that in fairly short order. He said they've also done some investigations into wobbly rockets and should have information on that pretty soon. Now, as for the wobbly rockets, are they meant to wobble? Well, obviously not, but this does depend. It depends on how you go about building your rockets. Now, if you're building long, slender ships, they're really skinny, like, you know, pencil size, but really long, massively long, then naturally they are going to wobble. But the wider rockets, they shouldn't really be wobbling uh, well, because they've got more innate stability due to the way they've been constructed. So this is definitely something that is going to be fixed. Uh, really looking forward to seeing that, actually, because it can be quite a bit of a problem. Now let's move on to some of the other fixes that they have mentioned in the past that are coming with uh, this second patch. So this is a slightly older forum thread. It was posted on the 24th of March, so a few weeks ago at this point. But it does, it was after patch one, but it does give us some details on at least a few of the things that we can expect to see in the patch two. Obviously, this won't include everything we can expect to see. So they do seem to be focusing mostly on fixes here rather than new content. Obviously, I wouldn't expect to see too much in the way of new content just yet. Um, so I won't read all the items off here. You can obviously read that yourself if you need to. Just pause the video or alternatively go to the forum thread that I will link in the video description. But a few things that I do want to point out. They've been able to switch in between vehicles in atmospheric flight. So that should be pretty handy. Uh, click priority to planets rather than moons when zoomed out on a map view. So that's going to be pretty handy because quite often I end up clicking on the wrong body. I'm sure many of you will do the same. Struts and fuel lines no longer broken after cloning sub-assembly in the VAB. That's a good 
uh, fixed flowers on Kerbin. We've got a picture of that in just a moment. A nice little screenshot and um, various CPU and GPU optimizations to improve performance. So here we've got that nice image on the flowers. In fact, this is a nice screenshot all around. They've landed somewhere on Kerbin. At least I would assume so. And we've got some, yeah, the flowers here. So rather than being just 2D kind of objects, they're now solid looking um, flowers. Much better, big improvement. We've also got another screenshot here of visual improvements, which has improved the atmospheric somewhat. In this case, height maps or height for the ground level fog. So yeah, that looks pretty nice as well. So that gives us some indication on what to expect for the second patch of the KSP2. Do let me know in the comments section what you want to see fixed. Are there general bugs and fixes that you'd like to see improved? Is it mainly performance issues you're experiencing? Are there any really significant standout issues that you would like to see? Or would you like them to really get our progress and move forward on adding science into the game? Would you like to see that coming sooner rather than later, maybe for patch three even? Now there are some other things, or one other thing I really don't want to talk about. This is not KSP2 related, it is KSP1 related, but it's so nice, such a wonderful uh, thing here that I really do want to share it with you. So this is a mod for KSP1. It's made by Jason Kerman, posted to the official forums here, and it adds an entire new star system into KSP. This includes 30 unique celestial bodies, as well as a black hole. And this looks like Gargantua, doesn't it? From uh, Interstellar, really nice looking graphics there. Now, apparently this mod has taken over a year to build. So it is a massive undertaking and a massive endeavor. Of course, the forum thread will include all the instructions on how to install this. But if this is something that you'd like to see me produce a video on uh, either next week or maybe the week after, do let me know in the comment section because uh, I do like KSP1 and would be more than happy to produce a video on this because this is definitely something I'm going to spend a bit of time looking at. Let's actually have a look at the uh, video clip here. So this is the trader. We're not going to look at the whole thing because if you want to look at the trader, you can do that yourself. So these are a lot of nice new planetary bodies there. Just look at the atmospheric effects on that. That's fantastic. Some really nice uh, ground effects here. So a whole load of new planets to explore in KSP. Let's see if we can find where that black hole is. More lovely looking atmosphere there. And oh, look at this. So there we are. There's the black hole. And we even get to see it from the surface of the planet. So stunning looking stuff. Again, if you want to install this in KSP, the forum thread, along with all the instructions you need, are linked in the video description. And this is something I'll be taking a look at over the coming weeks. Assuming you want me to do that, do let me know. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.